Script interviews Elon Musk. A senator implies the woman's referendum is cringe. Irish people joke too much. All this and more on today's episode of The News. You know, when I saw that Gript had actually interviewed Elon Musk, I actually knew that the interview would be really, really boring because Gript are only at their best when they're interviewing liars. I did watch the full thing so you don't have to. And let's just say this. If you typed into ChatGPT, compose a political interview with Elon Musk where the interviewer is on his side, it would come up with this exact transcript. Falling birth rates, freedom of speech is a good thing, leave the farmers alone. You've literally just experienced the entire 25 minutes in the span of three seconds. I hope they'd go full joe.ie and create a humorous segment where they'd ask Elon Musk to pronounce obscure Irish names. See ya, man. No, it's actually Siobhan. And maybe follow it up by making him watch a few Irish mammy TikToks and asking him if he's ever had a chicken fillet roll. Anyway, the mainstream media are also pissed off because Elon Musk offered to pay the legal fees of Irish citizens who are persecuted by the state for speech crimes. But I also have reservations about billionaire businessmen who barely know this country sticking the roar in and making pronouncements about things they don't really know an awful lot about. I mean, yes, it's bad that you might end up in jail for rapping straight out of Compton in its entirety. But, you know, listen, if you haven't been to the Ring of Kerry, I think it's highly inappropriate for you to be helping out victims of the state. Ireland is about to do a referendum to change the constitution to use language that is less sexist against women. Of course, they're holding the referendum on the 8th of March, which is International Women's Day. Today, this sexist pig implied that this was shameful, manipulative, cringe and contrived. Some Egypt in government buildings said, we'll have a better chance of getting this through if we say it's going to be held on International Women's Day. And we will be seen to be, in inverted commas, pro-woman. It's shameful, really. To be honest, I think it's just a very expensive way to allow Irish women to feel triumphant on their favourite day of the year, which I'm not against. Although, of course, they haven't ironed a shirt in 30 years, each generation still needs a winnable war. A story to tell their granddaughters about what they had to overcome to fight for their rights. In the absence of any actual obstacles, a redundant changing of the wording of the Constitution will have to do. And holding it on Woman's Day is great storytelling. And a good opportunity for the ladies to gloat. This lady is being criticised for saying that Irish people joke around too much. They'll give you that some stereotype joke. Like, it's not a joke. It's something serious that you shouldn't be saying and everything. But then you'll get, oh, but we're Irish, we like to joke around, we like to have make a, f a laugh out of something. And that needs to change within the Irish community. I don't really know the context of this, but of course I assume it's something to do with her, maybe religion. Yeah, like, the far right aren't gonna like this. The crack is what sort of Irish people hold dear to their hearts, almost more than anything. The liberals will say that the Irish people had to all emigrate during the famine, and that was bad crack, so we need to have shit crack now as some kind of eternal penance for our previous misfortune. I don't know about that. Anyway, guys, as well, Brian Dobson died today. Very sad stuff. I'm gonna leave the video here. If you did enjoy this video, uh, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.